Welcome to BBC News, broadcasting to viewers in North America and around the globe. I'm Regid Ahmed, our top stories. Cyclone Debbie batters northeastern Australia. Parts of Queensland are in lockdown as the monster storm brings destructive winds and tidal surges. Iraqi forces fight their way deeper into the city of Mosul amid more concerns about civilian casualties. That is an inaccurate weapon. It might be good for the tempo of the military operation, but it isn't necessarily good for preserving civilian lives. The family of one of the victims killed in the Westminster terror attack speak for the first time about feeling the love of so many people. And cracking down on the men who harass women. We go on patrol with India's anti-Romeo squads. Hello and welcome. What's being described as a monster cyclone has begun to batter northeast Australia. Tens of thousands of people, including tourists, have been evacuated from coastal areas amid warnings of wind gusting of up to 250 kilometres an hour and dangerous tidal surges. Caroline Davies has the story. Well, that cyclone has uh, made uh, landfall now. Emma Reynolds is a reporter for the Australian website news.com.au and she joins me now from Airlie Beach. Um, Emma, uh, we're glad you're safe. Tell us what you're seeing and what's happening around you. Well, we were on holiday in Airlie Beach and we were evacuated from our hotel, which was on the waterfront. Um, we're now at another hotel slightly up the hill, but still just a few hundred metres from the beach. Um, all we can hear is this really terrifying noise, uh, howling wind, uh, cracking of branches or, or possibly damaged houses. We don't know. We can't see them. But we can see branches kind of strewn about the hotel driveway, um, sheets of rain just uh, moving across the sky and um, a bit of sort of up to the ankles kind of flooding around our hotel, even though we're on that hill. We're actually, uh, we do have pictures, radar pictures of the, uh, track of the cyclone, which uh, is appearing right uh, off the coast. Uh, I believe yeah. you were told to move earlier. Do you have fears for your safety? Are people around you feeling safe? Yeah, well, we didn't really, uh, we weren't really given the option to, to get a bus out, although we knew that some people were. Um, it was sort of quite late by that point, so we, our hotel suggested that we move to another hotel nearby and that might be the easier than sort of taking to the roads, which are very dangerous, and one person's already died in an accident on the road. Um, I definitely people in this hotel are worried, although we're, we're in a safer hotel, we're, we're still near the beach, and, and many of the people staying here are locals who have houses uh, right on the waterfront, and they're really worried that their houses could be destroyed. Are you getting any updated information on, uh, on what you should do and, and how long this could last, how long you could be stuck there, essentially? Well, we've had a little bit of information from our hotel. They've, they've talked to us about the escape route down to the underground car park. Um, uh, we were told to get supplies, food and bottled water, which we've got, um, and battery chargers because uh, there's no power since last night. And we also lost our... Um, uh, some of the phone networks early this morning. So um, it's not really clear what we'll be able to do moving on. We know that we can go underground there, but um, getting out was, was not necessarily possible. And some people who moved to other areas were maybe in, in wor worse areas because they were low-lying right on the right on the water. Uh, Emma Reynolds with uh, news.com.au. Do uh, stay safe there and hopefully we can keep in touch with you. She's uh, in Airlie Beach there experiencing Cyclone Debbie as it hits the Australian uh, Queensland coast. Well, moving on, the Iraqi government forces are intensifying their efforts to drive so-called Islamic State out of western Mosul. They're deploying helicopter gunships and crude rocket launchers to target IS militants. But thousands fleeing the city say civilians are being killed because the assault is too indiscriminate. Our Middle East editor Jeremy Bowen reports from western Mosul. Scotland Yard says there's no evidence of any link between Khalid Massoud 
who killed three pedestrians and a policeman in Westminster and the Islamic State group, or Al-Qaeda. Masood's mother has spoken of her shock and sadness, saying she's cried for his victims. The family of one of the victims, the American tourist Kurt Cochran, have been speaking about their pain, but said they bear Masood no ill will. Our correspondent Daniela Ralph reports. Well, police are to install new security barriers around the Queen's residence at Windsor Castle ahead of the next Changing the Guard ceremony on Wednesday. Officers said the measures weren't in response to specific intelligence but followed a review in light of the attack in Westminster. Well, stay with us on BBC News. Still to come, with President Trump's health care plan in tatters, where does he go from here? Could infrastructure renewal be the key to bridging political divides? This is BBC News. I'm Regid Ahmed. The latest headlines. People living in low-lying parts of northeastern Australia are in lockdown as Cyclone Debbie sweeps across northern Queensland. And government forces in Iraq are intensifying their efforts to drive so-called Islamic State out of western Mosul. The campaign is raising further concerns about civilian casualties. Well, let's get more now on our main story, Cyclone Debbie, which is currently battering parts of Queensland. Well, with me now is the BBC Weather Centre's Stav Danaos to tell us a lot more. Um, Hi, Stav, Reggie. thank Hi. you very much for joining us. Yep. First of all, what is fueling this cyclone? Well, these systems are develop over the sea. They're fueled by the warm, uh, the moisture off warm seas, and sea temperatures over 27 uh, degrees Celsius are where hurricanes and tropical cyclones form. So this system. Has been so well forecast actually. Has been a slow moving system over the Coral Sea. It's had time to uh, strengthen over the very warm waters of the Coral Sea. We're looking at temperatures over 30 Celsius, so this has been a perfect breeding ground for a severe storm. So now it's a category four severe storm. It's uh, producing destructive winds over the Wind Sunday Islands. And as it's making landfall now on the mainland, the actual mainland of Queensland, those wind speeds will considerably drop down to maybe 100 miles an hour because it's starting to lose the uh, inflow of moisture off the sea. So I think. Debbie is now going to become a, a bigger and more of a rain event as we head through the course of Tuesday. So uh, can you give us a bit more uh, an idea then <clears throat> of its path and the forecast there? OK, well, like I mentioned, it has been excellently forecast. It is moving over the Whitsunday Islands to make landfall uh, around uh, between um, sort of the Bowen area and north of Mackay. It's going to head inland very slowly though, so there's going to be phenomenal amounts of torrential rain in a short space of time over a re relatively small area. Now it's going to head inland. What these systems usually do is head inland and choke themselves out and decay very quickly because they completely lose that supply of moisture from the sea. But if you'll notice here, what they're forecasting is for the storm to suddenly veer to a south-southeast direction and move along the coast of Queensland down towards Brisbane, maybe even reaching northern New South Wales to Sydney. So it'll continue to have a moisture inflow off the sea as the system moves down. So it'll never really decay properly had it moved inland completely into the desert and uh, burnt itself out. So this is going to be an incredible rain feature as it moves along the coast down towards Brisbane and maybe even Sydney. So does that mean it's going to stay just as powerful as what we're seeing now as it continues to move? No, I mean the extreme power that we've got now, the destructive winds, is because it's been in open waters over the coral, over that really warm coral sea. As it's moving inland, the minute it encounters uh, a large landmass, it begins to weaken considerably. But because, like I showed you, it's moving along the coast to continue to have some inflow of moisture from the sea, then this is what's going to continue to fuel it. But it's going to be a rain feature rather than a wind feature, I think, for the for the rest of the week. So it's going to be, we're going to see some ph phenomenal flooding. Remember this storm is causing some incredible uh, storm surges as it makes landfall as well. Stav Deneos from the BBC Weather Centre, thank you very much thank for you. all of that. Thank you, thanks Reggie. Well, after last week's healthcare defeat for President Trump, the big question now is what it will do to the rest of his agenda. Another major promise made during the president's campaign was to fix the nation's crumbling infrastructure. But as James Cook reports from California, it will be no easy task. 
Sexual harassment is a huge problem in India. Some surveys suggest more than 80% of women there have been harassed at some time in their lives. Now India's most popular state, Uttar Pradesh, is taking action, sending out what it calls anti-Romeo squads. Justin Rolat has been to see one of the police teams in action. Russia's opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been sentenced to 15 days in prison for organising the biggest anti-government protests in the country for several years. Tens of thousands of people attended the anti-corruption rallies in cities across Russia. Our correspondent Steve Rosenberg reports from Moscow. Much more coming up on BBC World News. See you soon.